The calendar has flipped to September, which means the regular season of the NFL is upon us. And so is a regular season episode of Special Edition here from the star in Frisco. Welcome in, everybody, alongside Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton, a trio of, of former Dallas Cowboys. I'm Kyle Yeomans. And Gentlemen, we have a regular season game to talk about September 11th against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But before we really dive into that next week, we're going to preview the season. Who's under pressure? Who do the Cowboys need to look out for? And what is happening with this roster moving into the final 53-man cuts? But let's start things off with your initial impressions. The preseason in the books, training camps in the rearview mirror. Isaiah, what is your impression of this team at the moment moving into the regular season? I think the tides have turned, Kyle. I think that this is now a defensive team, and I think that is where the strength is at. That's where my hope is at because offensively they have some troubles up front, and I'm sure my guy Nate likes to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, the defense is definitely the strength of this team going into this season. Offensively, they have some question marks out there. Offensive line, wide receivers, whew, we're going to dive into it. And what they mean by that right there is we're going to have to play the situation of uh, football. We're going to have to play it by down the distance, and we're going to have to have a, a tremendous run game so we can help this offensive line. You've got to help this offensive line. There's plenty of holes up there. We're going to get to that here in just a second. But first, let's hear from Jerry Jones, presented by Texas Lotto, on why the Cowboys are looking into veterans and looking elsewhere for off offensive line help. Jerry, is it looking like the rookie Tyler Smith is going to be replacing Tyron Smith at left tackle? Yeah, uh, I think that's safe to say. Uh, we've got to get him out of here and get him practiced here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, now, what is the case is he hasn't been there at left tackle, and he um, is a rookie, but he's a first-round pick, and he deserved to be a first-round pick in my mind. And so uh, we knew uh, we just didn't want it to come any earlier than it needed, but uh, uh, we knew we had to get ready to uh, replace our left tackle when he was the pick. So Jerry's speaking there and saying it's safe to say that there's a potential that Tyler Smith will be the left tackle replacement for Tyron Smith in the injury we talked about last week. Have they done enough, though, Isaiah, when you look at the front of trying to invest in this type of break glass and in case of emergency type of scenario? I think they've attempted. I think they've tried. I think they had a plan A, B, and C, and they're now on C. Uh, Josh Ball was their plan A. He was he didn't play last year. And you went to, well, let's go. He got hurt in the preseason. And now you're going to your emergency plan in Smith, which you would like to have given him more time, but you just don't have that. Yeah, to me, it still confuses me to this day. You know, I understand Tyron Smith is an all-world player, Hall of Fame caliber player, but the guy's missed 23 games in the last three seasons. I think that's a big enough sample size to realize that he's not going to be able to give you 17 games year in and year out. I believe this team should have had an option during training camp to have a solid backup plan. Josh Ball, I think he showed you during the training camp that he's not the answer. The jury's still out on Matt Walesco, so now you're going to throw a raw rookie out there at tackle after no reps at the tackle position during training camp. Good luck against Tampa Bay. Well, let's try and see how we can maybe help out Tyler Smith a little bit. Nate, I mean, you played in the offensive line for this Cowboys team throughout your entire career. Now, how do you help a rookie? How do you help a guy with so little snaps on the offensive side of the football to allow them to be successful in week one? You put your tight end over there, number one. You run people across the formation to make when this guy come off the line, make him hesitate just a second when you're running people. You move your quarterback around, you boot, you do naked boots, you uh, sprint out. You don't keep that uh, the way your quarterback set up on a three, five, and seven step drop. You don't have him just dropping straight back behind your center. You got to move him around, move the pocket just a little bit to your right or to your left so they just can't beat in on him and give this guy a chance. And more importantly, they have to run the football. Yeah, you're 100% right, Nate. I would definitely not leave this guy on an island. I would slide my protection to him as much as I can, maybe use tight ends or running backs to chip the defenders that are over top of him. And like you mentioned, I would definitely let, let lean on my running game. You know, let this guy get his aggression out. Let him enforce his will on the opposing defense, and hopefully that will get his confidence up going forward. He was one of the best run blockers in all of college football last year. Maybe that's how you get your feet underneath him in week one against a really stout Tampa Bay front seven. Tyler Smith trying to elevate his stock going into the season, but a couple young guys have already elevated their stock. Who made the roster? Who didn't? Who toughed it out in the preseason like Peyton Hendershot? We'll tell you when we come back on Special Edition. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas. Reliant, an NRG company. 
blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by Salvation Army. Love beyond. It's been a big week here from the star in Frisco. So we welcome you back into special edition. And while there were plenty of roster cuts for the Cowboys, plenty of roster moves for the Cowboys going back and forth in order to cut it all the way down to the 53 man that they need heading into week one of the NFL regular season. Here's a look at the notable cuts. These are names that we thought had good preseasons, good training camps, but instead were either waived or cut by the Cowboys whenever that Tuesday cut down came along. Malik Davis on the list had a great preseason as a running back overall. Sean McEwen, who was trying to make the roster as the number two or the number three tight end in the rotation, he's no longer there. Now, I will say a lot of these names are back. Carlos Watkins, who was a starter last year at times, back on the practice squad. A lot of those names there. Nate, anybody that stick out to you or surprise you on that list of notable cuts? You know, I like the way Brandon Smith played. He was consistent. There's too many guys flash, though. You know, you had the turpentine and all of these guys, <laughs> the hinder shots and all of these guys. But I liked it, Brandon Smith, and I thought he could probably at least get back on the practice squad. Yeah, to me, it had to be uh, Carlos Watkins. I mean, this was a guy last year who I believe performed well as a rotational piece along that defensive line had a great training camp but it just goes to show you how deep this defensive line really is and I'm gonna go with what, what, what I believe was the obvious which is Avion Collins yeah. you know Avion Collins is a guy who played right tackle through the preseason and he was a guy that I, I believe played well and consistent throughout those uh, preseason games and then you look at the situation that we have right now we don't necessarily have a lot of depth at that role so uh, <laughs> it's very surprising that they let him go Collins specifically he's back on the practice squad spent all of last year on the practice squad but only allowed two hurries in the first 100 snaps of the preseason now he did allow a sack in that third and final game against Seattle Let's Let's hear from Peyton Hendershot, who's speaking on that Seattle game, made a mark and in doing so made the roster. It, it definitely is. And I think, you know, Jake Ferguson and just all the guys in the room all have a great mindset. And Ferguson also did a great job of just I was down in the dumps kind of in that third quarter. And he, he started jumping with me, got my spirits up high. And I just very thankful for this room. They, they brought nothing but good out of me and they just helped be great teammates to me. And I'm very appreciative of them all. So the tight end hinder shot making an impact. A couple other offensive guys made their impact as well. Let's take a look at some of those names because overall they needed guys to step up, especially as pass catchers. Simi Fehoko, you've got, uh, of course, making the roster. You had Dennis Houston make the roster. Now Peyton Hendershot in that conversation. Isaiah, how big of a preseason was this for the Dallas pass catchers to make an impact on that side of the ball? It was huge. You think about last year's draft pick, Simi Fehoko probably had one of the best camps of anybody uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, so he deserved it, and obviously he, uh, he, he got rewarded. Dennis Houston, he's trusted. He's the guy that Dak loves. He's that young talent. And then you got young uh, Hendershot. Linda Wells absolutely loves him, and he is a guy that's probably the biggest playmaker at the tight end position. And there are some guys, Barry, on the defensive side of the football that did very similar things of elevating their name. I mean, the number one that made the, the cut was undrafted free agent out of Florida a and I want both of you guys to hit on it, but Marquise Bell, he had a fantastic camp, even carried that into the preseason. A couple other names that stood out. Who stood out to you that made the roster there? For me, it has to be, like you said, Marquise Bell, and as well as um, Israel Mukwamu. I feel like these guys had to be uh, kept on this roster they both have great position flex especially McQuamo who could play free safety nickel corner as well and uh, Bell on that other hand he could play strong safety as well as that walk down linebacker kind of what Curse's role is so I'm glad they kept both of these guys the safety room is extremely deep so it gives these guys great opportunity to learn develop to be key contributors to this defense in the future Israel McQuamo I can pronounce your name brother you earned it two <laughs> interceptions during the uh, preseason you've done your job Marquise Bell Love you, baby. Rattlers for life. Keep rocking. You said Mukwami? Mukwamu. Mukwamu. No, Mukwamu. I said Mukwamu. You can, you can pronounce it. I said Mukwamu. It. All right, let's go. <laughs> we'll review Mukwamu. the tape. We'll, we'll go back and look we'll at it. Tape. We'll review the tape, but I think Israel, you said it. I do know that's your first name. <laughs> he's got, team. He's got that one right, and Mukwamu. he is on the 53-man <laughs> roster. Hey, all these guys also providing some jolt to special teams as well, so keep yes. that in mind. All right, when we come back on Special Edition, Dak Prescott or Mike McCarthy, who's under more of a microscope in 2022? This segment was brought to you by Salvation Army. Love beyond. <laughs> okay. 
This segment is brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas. To me, this is what, this is what it's about. We, we've all been together since April. Um, we knew we were going to be young, and, you know, and so we wanted our guys. And, and so the fact that we were able to get all these guys back, I think is very, very beneficial uh, to us. It speaks to our program, our culture. Uh, but the defensive guys, you, you know, you have to, you know, that it's, it's, it's the numbers are what they are because these defensive guys aren't earned it. So they got their guys back. Mike McCarthy brought to you by AT&T as we welcome you back in to special edition. And he does have his roster set. 53 men moving forward to try and reach the ultimate goal here in 2022. But how much pressure is on Mike McCarthy and a couple other members of that 53-man roster? Let's start with Mike and Dak Prescott. Which out of these two, and you're going to have to tell me why, who has the most pressure on them entering this season, Isaiah? Mike McCarthy. Dak Prescott is your quarterback of the future. You don't come on, you don't just stumble upon franchise quarterbacks. So when you have one, obviously you give them the opportunity, you give them the resources, and the number one thing you give them is their asset, which is time. So Dak Prescott has that on his side. Coach McCarthy necessarily doesn't have that. I know Dan Quinn said that he's not coming around the corner, but he's looking around the corner. But trust me, there's plenty of guys that would love to come up right behind Coach McCarthy. Yeah, you're 100% right, Isaiah. I think it's Mike McCarthy as well. And it's, it's simply because if he doesn't win and get this team to the playoffs, and not just the playoffs, I think he has to make a deep run in the playoffs, I think his job could be on the line. So there's a lot of pressure on Mike to get this thing done, and hopefully this offense and defense can go along with him. But he has to get the job done this year. You got new receivers, young receivers. You got an offensive line that's, that's out of whack. I mean, they have no continuity. He got a lot of things on his mind plus getting deep into the playoffs. The pressure is definitely on Coach McCarthy. Well, and if there is pressure on McCarthy, there's still pressure on Dak just based off of the personnel around him. It's not as talented of a roster, at least on paper, as he's had to deal with in the early parts of his career. Now shifting to the coordinators, how about Dan Quinn or Kellen Moore? You mentioned Dan Quinn. He's not coming around the corner just yet, but he's still a firm NFL head coaching candidate for 2023. Could Kellen Moore be in that mix as well? Who's under more pressure, Nate? I think uh, Kellen Moore, from my point of view, because he's got to deal with an upset offensive line. He got young receivers he's got to deal with. And, and more importantly, Dan Quinn is proven. As a defensive coordinator, he's in the top five in the league, so he's just going to put his players in place and let them roll. Yeah, and I'm going to go with Dan Quinn on this one. You know, I think, you know, everybody's looking at his unit to be the strength of this team going forward. And I feel like the fans are banking on his defense to be able to take the football away as well as they did last year. But if you look at history, the last defense to force back-to-back, -to, -back, to lead the league in force turnovers in back-to-back -back years was the 85-86 Bears. So to me, Dan Quinn, there's a lot of pressure on his defense to at least hold it down until this offense can find its identity. Both of you guys make very valid points, but I'm going to have to roll with Kellen Moore sure. simply because of the fact that he's going to have to become Picasso and piece this thing together. Um, somehow, some way, he's going to have to find out a way to become productive. These guys were at the top of the league last year as far as offense. People are going to look for him to follow that up. Um, but he's going to have to do so, as you mentioned, Nate, without the protection and the ground game that he would like to have. I like what Barry had to say about Dan Quinn because expectation breeds pressure at the same time, and the higher expectations right now are certainly on the defensive side of the football, much because of these two guys as well, Micah Parsons or Trayvon Diggs, both coming off of fantastic seasons, breakout seasons in 2021. Barry, when you look at Dan Quinn's unit, who is under more pressure to perform this year? I would have to say Micah Parsons, and simply because he had one of the most outstanding rookie seasons there was last year. And look, I don't care how great your secondary is, if you can't get after the quarterback, then your defense is going to be no good. So to me, Micah Parsons, he has the pressure to take this defense along with him and follow up on an outstanding rookie season. When you look at Diggs, you know, he's facing the best receiver of the opponent's team. But when you look at Michael Parsons, he's playing more positions than anybody on this team. I think Michael Parsons is the guy we look for. He has the most pressure. From, from versatility standpoint alone, I agree with you. I think Michael Parsons plays more positions, so he's going to have more pressure in trying to juggle those positions back and forth moving into this season. All right, when we come back on special edition, let's take a look at the NFC East, previewing all of the opponents for the Dallas Cowboys. Can they be the first division back-to-back -back champions in over 20 years? We'll talk about the possibilities when we come back. This segment was brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas.
Up here on Special Edition as we get you ready for the 2022 Dallas Cowboys campaign. Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Let's take a look at the NFC East, starting with the Philadelphia Eagles. Cowboys looking to repeat and probably, at least on paper, their number one threat to dethrone the Cowboys is probably Philadelphia, Isaiah. Philadelphia is a problem. I'm not even going to sit up here and lie. I know this is Cowboys Nation, but that defensive front that Philadelphia has now uh, with Fletcher Cox and the Jordan Davis combo, and then you accompany that by putting uh, N'Kobe Dean behind those guys, that is going to be really, really nasty. Uh, you flip it over to the offensive side of the ball, they obviously have Jalen Hurts, and they are surrounding him with a plethora of talent. Uh, by the way, they went and got A.J. Brown at receiver, so now he has a new number one. These are somebody, that's, somebody that we're going to have to watch out for in the NFC East, and we're going to have to see him twice a year, obviously. You think about the next level to step up for uh, let's say a Jalen Hurts and then even a Devontae Smith who was a Heisman Trophy winner at the receiver spot and then comes in was a little banged up throughout this offseason but he's definitely going to try and take a step forward now Barry we're going to get to you in a second with the Giants so sit tight but I want to go down to the end with Nate Newton one of your most hated teams throughout your entire playing career was Washington. Yes. Now we get the first chance to see Cowboys and Commanders. What are you looking at for the Commanders this season? What do they bring to the table? They trying to uh, rebirth. Is that a word? Uh, Carson Wentz ain't going to happen. You know, it, 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 they, they will be the fourth team in this league. And mm -hmm. Chase Young, he's on pup. Washington, they're out of it. Yeah, four weeks on pup. So yeah. the Cowboys play Washington, by the way, in week four. So with that being said, you're not going to see Chase Young the first time around, but they will see him again in week 18 probably. So toward the end of the season. So keep that in mind. They play the Giants in week three on Monday Night Football. And then week 12, Barry, Nate just went out on a limb and said that Washington was the fourth team in the league. Do you think the same? Or do you think the Giants are going to take a step up? No, I don't think we have anything to worry about when it comes to the Giants. <laughs> uh, I think this will be an uphill battle for first-year head coach uh, Dayball out there because I just don't think they can overcome the quarterback situation. I mean, you got Daniel Jones out there. He's a walking turnover. He's had the third most turnover since entering the league in 2019, and I know they have some solid pieces on that defensive side of the ball, but as an overall team, I don't think they can overcome the suspect play of Daniel Daniel Jones, so I think they'll be fourth in this division when it's all said and done. So a very quick synopsis preview on the NFC East back and forth, and at least from what I'm hearing from you guys, nobody outside of Philly able to challenge for the Cowboys title this year? Mm -mm. Back to back. Back to back. Looking forward to it. Hopefully that's the case. And we're going to give some <laughs> predictions as well coming up on the other side of the break. What do these three guys think the Cowboys are going to do in 2022? You got a sneak peek there. They'll tell you specifically put their bets down when we come back. <laughs> Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas, Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys, and by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Final segment of special edition here from the star in Frisco, Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Let's give our predictions for the 2022 season. This is the media's most hated segment because we're going to just make fun of this at some point later on down the road. <laughs> but I need a record and I need a playoff scenario. Like what, what happens in the playoffs as well. Nate, I'm going to start with you. you 17 you regular games. Regular season, right? Regular season. We record. have 17 games, 17 right? 17 games. And believe me, I can always find a way to win. I'm 17 and 0, baby. 17 and, and 0. Early. Yeah, we rolling like that. <laughs> you and Mike and only. And we rolling 17 and 0. So Super Bowl yeah. champions, I'm assuming. Uh, no, we're gonna lose in the second round. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> so that's not great. All right, Isaiah. I mean, Barry, let's move on. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 10 and seven. I think they win in division. Um, they have a little little rough patch wow. early on in the season, but I think they catch their stride going towards later in the uh, in the year. 10 and seven. I think they get to the divisional round and get a little upset upset uh, loss there in the divisional. Okay. I'm going 11 to 6. I think these guys are going to struggle early on. As Barry mentioned, they have some tough opponents uh, in the first part of the season. Guys that have been true to, true in, true out in terms of going deep in the playoffs or even the Super Bowl. Um, and then they figure things out later on. So I'm going with Barry in terms of the regular season record. I'm going to say 10 and 7. But I'm also going to say they make a run and they make it to the NFC Championship game. How about that? That's my prediction. I'm getting bold here That's bold. on Special Edition. We'll see you next week. <laughs> it's time to preview Tampa Bay, Dallas Cowboys. Week one's finally here.